Good Wednesday morning, everybody. Thanks for being with us on KXAN Live. I'm Will Dupree coming to you from the KXAN Live studio. We appreciate you being here with us on this very sunny day in downtown Austin at the moment. I do want to let you all know that there is a severe weather potential for Thursday and Friday. We have more forecast details all about that. You can read it at KXAN.com and check it out on the KXAN News app. But wanted to let you know about this story that is available now on our website, too. Here's the headline right here. It reads, How are animal shelters addressing their overpopulation issues? We have told you a lot on KXAN about what shelters are doing with a recent increase in cats and dogs coming into their care. So we took a solutions-based approach, asking them what they're doing to try to deal with this situation as it's not going away anytime soon. And the reporter behind this story, again, that you can find on our website is Ivy Fowler. She is one of our interns here at KXAN and is a student at UT Austin studying journalism and has been with us for the past few months uh, exploring this whole news world. Ivy, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Will. Excited to be here. Yeah, we're very excited about that. And it's always a good day to talk about cats and dogs. Very nice to do that, too. But uh, you really wanted to look into this issue about how pet shelters are looking at overcrowding and overpopulation and dealing with that. So explain what led you to reporting on that and checking the story out. So it originally started out as a community member um, <clears throat> excuse me, gave us a call and really wanted to highlight Misty Valenta, the uh, director of the Williamson County Regional Animal Shelter, just saying that she's been doing really great work with the shelter ever since she stepped into the role. So Misty and I, we, we got on the phone together, we had a conversation about what she's been doing, and I kind of didn't really see the, the room for a profile piece necessarily, but what I did see was the potential to really highlight what the animal shelters are doing right now to address this issue that's been going on because we know that it has been an issue. Um, it's, it's nothing really new for Austin, really even the Central Texas, Texas region itself. So I just wanted to kind of um, just just figure out what they're doing and maybe even act, maybe even have the story act as a guide for shelters to see like, hey, what are, what are the people around me doing? And maybe can I implement that in my shelter as well as for the community to know how they might be able to help out and know um, how the shelters around them are addressing this issue. Yeah, that's such a cool take on it, especially how it all started with just a conversation on the phone with somebody. Uh, let's talk about what issues led to the problems that some shelters are seeing right now with more pets coming in. What are some of those factors that have contributed to that? So the first thing I think that comes to mind when people um, hear about this issue is the pandemic pet so to speak, which um, is, you know, it's you're working from home, feel like you have a little bit more time on your hands, adopt a pet. Maybe it's something you've been wanting to do for a while, and now you have the time resource to do that. But then, you know, going back to work, kind of not really feeling like you have the time to give this, um, give this pet, this animal, the love, the, the love and the care that you, that you feel that it needs. So, you know, or even the financial, the financial stress of like after pandemic life and then having to, to return the pet back to the shelter. And that's, I think, what comes to people's mind first when we talk about this issue. But other things to consider too is that apartments have restrictions on the, the breeds and the weights of the animals. Or, you know, I mentioned the financial stress and it could be non-pandemic related as well just not really having the resources or feeling like you have the support to support that animal. Um, and then other things too, like the stress, the anxiety that animals can experience from having someone at home all of the time and then going back to, you know, they're, they're by, by themselves at home all day and then them escaping the yard and getting lost and then maybe being taken to a different shelter outside of the, outside of their region. Um, Misty, actually, she told me about one story. They returned a pet to a family who had moved to New Mexico. Hmm. And it was just, they, you know, they weren't even in the state anymore, but were able to get reunited with the pet. But just, just things like that. Yeah, I mean, the responsibilities that they take on to be able to help pets, and even in that regard, reuniting them, is pretty amazing uh, because it is so much work for all of them. In your story, though, you took in some numbers from a lot of different shelters, not just the one in Williamson County like you mentioned. And I want to highlight one graphic that you put together and is available now in your story on KXAN.com. Uh, this one here, it shows a number of different shelters and tracks the number of dogs that arrived and left for several years. Um, tell us about what we're looking at here. 
So I think um, there's two important things to note about this graphic is if you'll see in the green that's the adoption rate and then you'll notice in 2020 for the majority of the shelters all Houston Humane, Austin and Williamson County that green bar is increasing in 2020 right you see they saw a huge increase of adoptions during the period where people were working from home but then you'll see that green bar start to go down again and then the second thing that's important to note as well is anytime there is um the yellow bar the uh the the animal there are the dogs leaving anytime that bar is less than the blue bar that means those are animals that are staying in the shelter whether that be long term or just month to month so maybe there is um there's like a solid and a consistent intake of animals but anytime that those animals are not leaving the shelter that yellow bar is smaller than the blue bar that's animals that they're going to keep having to take care of and that are going to keep taking um taking those spaces and then so when when you're seeing the intake also remain consistent as it as it has been then that when when the outtake isn't consistent as well then they're seeing an overflow and then it's just like kind of um, what's what's the word like spilling into each other month by month and year by year? Sure, and and again we are showing you there. Uh, this is data from the Houston Humane Society, the Williamson County Regional Animal Shelter, and an Austin Animal Shelter, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and people, if you want to take a look at that and hover over some of these graphics, it is available on KXAN.com right now. Ivy did all this work to be able to give you this data and show you kind of the situation that a lot of these shelters are dealing with and some of the ebbing and flowing of animals coming in and going out. So I know that there are a lot of solutions out there regarding what some of the shelters are doing to try to deal with this increase in animals coming into their care and that they're not staying there at the shelter, even though they're getting great care there, they would love to place them with a loving home. So uh, what are some of those solutions that are being floated out there that they're trying out to try to deal with this? So one that I've seen, um, Misty is Misty over at Williamson County Animal Shelter. The first one that she let me know about that I actually saw kind of being consistent through the shelters that I talked to is a temporary approach to fostering. Mm -hmm. So they have like doggy day out is what they call it at Williamson. Um, and it's you just take a dog for a day and, you know, get it out of that space, um, that smaller space, especially, you know, when they're more crowded and having to double up. It just causes a lot of anxiety for the pet and you know you see these these dogs like when they spend time outside they become a completely different animal they become a completely different dog and so just that temporary fostering you know for a day or a weekend or a week or as long as really you're able to just to give that that animal some love and then also take that take that responsibility off of the shelter just for a little bit so they can have they and the dog can have a little bit of a reset and then other things as well, of course, is a call for volunteers. You know, volunteers um, really make the shelters work day in and day out along with the permanent staff. So just increasing their social media presence is what I've been seeing a lot. Um, increasing the accessibility to volunteering, making it to where it's not, um, it's not something that's scary to approach. You can just kind of walk in and say, hey, like, how can I help out? And so those are the two things I've really been seeing as well. And then, of course, Austin Animal has had to restrict their intake. That's right. Um, they, the, um, those, Austin, Austin Animal restricting their intake is the only shelter that I spoke to that has been doing that. Houston Humane did do it a few years back, but they are open for they are open for intake again. But Austin, Austin Animal is just feeling, I mean, they are one of, one of the largest shelters in this area, I think the largest shelter in this area so just like they're um yeah having to restrict that in intake unfortunately but you know of course their goal is to get back to um get back to standard operating and be able to take in those those pups and kittens kitten season is coming up so that is true we had some reporting about that as well on kxan.com so there's lots of pet coverage for us there but if you want to check out ivy's story again the headline there how are animal shelters addressing their overpopulation issues really taking a look at a solutions approach, what these shelters are doing to try to deal with the more cats and dogs coming into their care, and also how to find them loving homes, which is the goal at the end of the day. Um, Ivy, thank you so much for doing that story. Um, I always love an animal story, so this was a really cool, kind of different way to look at it. Um, I know that you've been here at KXAN for a few months, studying with us, looking at how we approach things and trying to learn from it. So 
What's your goal at the end of the day? I know that you're um, going to be graduating relatively soon, so how are you thinking about the future? What, what, would, what would you like to do? Yeah, I mean, what wouldn't I like to do? <laughs> I think is a better question. Um, I think that being at KXN has really opened my eyes to the greatness and the really the the, the really good avenues that I can I can explore like my creative side as well as my journalistic side mm. in broadcast news. So I think I'm leaning towards more going into uh, broadcast news. But I mean, writing has always been my first love. So maybe maybe something print in the future as well. Or podcasting is huge right now. Or maybe I don't even like anything really anything news related where I feel like I can flex that creative muscle. Well, we are so appreciative that you got a little bit of a start here, and we hope maybe one day you'll be back with us. Fingers <laughs> crossed. All right. We'll well, Ivy, thank you again so much for your story, and you can check that out on KXAN.com. We appreciate you being with us again. Thanks, thanks so much. Thanks for having me, Will. All right, everybody, you can read Ivy's reporting, and hopefully there will be much more on our website. It's coming up soon on KXAN.com as well as the KXAN News mobile app, so please check that out too and download it if you haven't done so already. I'm Will Dupree in the KXAN Live Studio. We appreciate you being with us here on this Wednesday morning. We'll see you back here at another time. Hope you all stay safe and healthy. Take care.